Welcome. I'm Dr. Pat McHugh, an equine veterinarian at Colorado State University. This is the first in a series of reviews on clinical cases in equine reproduction. Ideally, you will have downloaded uh, the ebook entitled uh, Clinical Cases in Equine Reproduction, Volume 1, and read the clinical case we're about to discuss in advance. These ebooks are free to download on any Apple device, such as an iPad, iPhone, or a Mac laptop. Uh, this review is intended to be a brief summary of the clinical case along with some clinical comments and a few take-home messages. The history of this horse is that she's a 12-year-old quarter horse mare and the owner had noticed behavioral changes over the past year. Normally a very placid mare and now has become aggressive toward other mares. Uh, this is a maiden mare. She is currently uh, not pregnant and, and nor has she been bred previously. This is a video of the mare, and um, uh, she's, as you'll see, going to exhibit some uh, stallion-like behavior. She's been walked over to another mare in our veterinary teaching hospital. Uh, this mare is very assertive. Now she's teasing uh, the gray mare, and the gray mare is in estrus, and she's breaking down um, the mare in question is wearing a, a, a muzzle because she's about to go to surgery. You can see the horse on the right, uh, the mare with this granulosa fecal cell tumor uh, has exhibited uh, marked stallion-like behavior. Ultrasound exam on this mare showed an enlarged left ovary. It's about the size of a small grapefruit and had multi-cystic appearance on ultrasound. Again, you can see it on the lower left photograph. The right ovary was small and had limited follicular activity. Again, ultrasound photograph on the right. The differential diagnoses for an enlarged ovary uh, could be an ovarian tumor, of which the granulosa cell tumor is the most common by far. Could be a cyst adenoma, or a teratoma. There's very few other uh, ovarian tumors of the horse. Uh, a hemorrhagic and ovulatory follicle, an ovarian hematoma, or ovaries in a pregnant mare round out the differential diagnoses for an enlarged ovary. And to talk about them individually, we'll start with the granulosa cell tumor. It is, again, uh, the most common of the ovarian tumors. And there's two subcategories of this. One is the classic granulosa cell tumor and the other is a granulosa fecal cell tumor and if there's fecal cells those are the cells of the normal ovary that uh, that produce testosterone and if there's fecal cells involved in the tumor generally testosterone levels are elevated and the mare can show aggressive or stallion-like behavior the photograph below uh, shows a, a mare mounting another mare and the mare doing the mounting uh, does have a granulosa fecal cell tumor, and again, showing stallion-like behavior. A cyst adenoma is an uncommon equine tumor. Uh, it can be multi-cystic in appearance, uh, but the key here is that the contralateral ovary is normal, and uh, that the mare will continue to cycle on that other ovary, where mares with a granulosa cell tumor typically do not cycle from the opposite ovary. Teratomas are also very uncommon tumors of the equine ovary. Uh, they uh, are not hormonally active, so again, mares generally continue to cycle uh, with the presence of this abnormal ovary. And these structures can have other tissue types in them. Could be hair, uh, bone, nerve tissue. Um, and so they'll, on ultrasound, they'll have a, a very uh, multiple echogenic look to them, uh, very different than a normal ovary would with some hyper echoic areas within the ovary. Persistent anovulatory follicles or the hemorrhagic version of an anovulatory follicle uh, can look multicystic. The photograph on the upper right shows a, a hemorrhagic anovulatory follicle that has somewhat of a multicystic look to it. And it's really just blood that is eventually clotted and for a little while will look multicystic. Eventually uh, it'll completely luteinize, as is the structure on the, uh, the lower photograph, and, um, and that will turn into a, a solid luteal structure, producing quite a lot of progesterone.
Again, uh, the opposite ovary on these uh, mares will still be active. And these are mares that had normal follicular activity up until the point where uh, there was active bleeding into the preovulatory follicle. The ovarian hematoma, as, as defined, is a post-ovulation event where uh, there was significant bleeding into the collapsed follicle, resulting in enlargement of the, of the former follicle greater than the size that it was uh, prior to ovulation. And essentially all this is is a giant blood clot. Uh, you can see an ultrasound photo on top and then a, a ovary that had been a long time ago surgically removed and essentially just a large blood clot and, and honestly did not need surgery. This is from many years ago. And don't forget that pregnant mares can have enlarged ovaries, especially when secondary corporal lutea form. They typically start forming a few weeks after the formation of endometrial cups, and that starts at around 35 days, and production of equine chorionic gonadotropin by the endometrial cups will uh, stimulate uh, production of secondary corpora lutea on the ovaries somewhere 45 to 50 or 55 days uh, uh, post-ovulation, and there can be multiple luteal structures on one or both ovaries resulting in, in an, a large size of the ovaries. And then also don't forget that pregnant mares, by the time they're three or four or five months in full, can start showing some uh, masculine behavior because of the elevation in testosterone coming from the fetal placental unit. So don't rule out pregnancy for either an enlarged ovary, and usually it's going to be bilateral, or uh, some male type characteristics in a normal pregnant mare. So back to our clinical case. A blood sample was submitted to the clinical endocrinology lab at UC Davis, and at the time, we just measured inhibin, testosterone, and progesterone, and we didn't at the time measure antinullarian hormone. Inhibin was markedly elevated. The normal range, uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.7 nanograms per mil, this mare had an inhibin level of about 2.7 nanograms per mil, which is very elevated over the range of, an, of, a, of no, normal mares. Her testosterone level, 144 picograms per mil, again, very high compared to the normal range of testosterone, which is 20 to 45 picograms per mil. Testosterone in normal horses generally follows the same pattern as estradiol, uh, rises with uh, the development of a follicle in estrus, and then drops back down post-ovulation. Progesterone in this mare was 0 0.2 nanograms per mil, indicating a lack of luteal tissue. And, and that's important to know in that if progesterone was elevated, it would suggest that there is luteal tissue around. And that's generally not happening in these mares with any type of granulosa cell tumor. And we don't know of any tumors currently that actively produce testosterone. So if progesterone was elevated, it should make us think that something else was going on in this mare and maybe it's not a uh, granulosa cell tumor. Progesterone levels are obviously normally low when a mare is in behavioral estrus and also low in non-cycling and estrus mares. And after ovulation in a normal mare, uh, progesterone levels are elevated above one nanogram per mil. Antimullerian hormone is one of the, the most commonly uh, measured hormones now uh, for diagnosis of a granulosa cell tumor. And levels in the normal mare range from 0 0.1 to 3.8 nanograms per mil. And again, in this mare, uh, we did not measure antimullerian hormone. So our clinical diagnosis based on uh, the behavior, the ultrasound exam, and our endocrine analysis was a granulosa fecal cell tumor. And the only real treatment possible for this mare is surgical removal of the abnormal ovary, which we did. And the the opposite ovary, the contralateral ovary, was not removed. Uh, this is a photograph of the tumor after removal, and then on the right photograph, the histopathology of, of that uh, granulosa fecal cell tumor. And uh, fortunately, um, you don't have to make a fast decision on surgery. It's unusual for these tumors to metastasize, um, and they're, they're very slow growing and, and typically benign. But eventually, surgical removal of the affected ovary is what is recommended. So the take home messages uh, in this particular case, it's a classical presentation 
of a granulosa fecal cell tumor as evidenced by the behavioral abnormality. Now there's three general behavior types of these granulosa cell tumors. One is persistent estrus. Uh, that may be 15 to 20% of, of mares with a granulosa cell tumor. Stallion or aggressive type behavior, put an asterisk by that. That's the one that this mare was, uh, was expressing. And some mares just don't cycle. They're, they're clinically anestrous. And, and these tumors may go on for months or years without uh, a diagnosis that these mares are not actively involved in a breeding program. Uh, most of these, uh, like this clinical case, is a unilaterally enlarged ovary and a small contralateral ovary. And many times you can make a diagnosis of a granulosa cell tumor just based on, on palpation um, alone of, of a unilaterally en enlarged ovary and a small opposite ovary uh, in, a, in a mare. Uh, the endocrine profile of this mare was consistent with a granulosa fecal cell tumor. And certainly we would suggest uh, endocrine verification as biological markers for the presence of these tumors before surgery is contemplated. And surgical removal is the, the method of choice for treatment. And we would uh, prefer to have histopathology confirm uh, our diagnosis. And mares like this should begin to develop follicles and resume cyclicity from that one remaining ovary in six to eight months. A majority of mares that have had the tumor removed uh, generally start to cycle the following spring. It's almost uh, as if they have to go through a, a winter anestrous type period before they start cyclicity. And so if you take a tumor out in May or June in the Northern Hemisphere, mare's probably not gonna cycle until the following spring. With that, if you want additional information on this case or other cases, you can visit the Equine Reproduction Laboratory. Uh, our website is, is erl.colostate.edu. We're available by email, Facebook, and Instagram. And the phone number for contact is, is written. And we will continue to provide additional clinical cases as we can. Thank you.